Hey everybody, welcome back. So you're probably asking yourself, what is this mess that is in your <laughs> in your monitor? Before I begin, let me say that I do have some new coupons from GearBest for 3D printers and things. They will be down in the comment section below. They are affiliate links. They don't cost you any more. I'll also be posting them and some STL files and other information to my new website called 3dprintingtheworld.com. So on to our mess down below. For months and now, I've been trying to make a video on how to print nylon on your Ender 3. And I have had some mixed results. I've probably got two hours worth of video, most of it failures, <laughs> of how to do this. And while I have had some success with the Tallman Bridge Nylon, which can be printed at 250 degrees, which the Ender 3 will do, or most of them will do, I have not had 100% luck with anything else, so or even halfway decent luck with anything else. And the problem is pretty simple. This is the stock Ender 3 hot end. In this hot end, our Bowden tube, let me get rid of the, let me get rid of the fitting out of it. Our Bowden tube goes all the way down all the way down to there. There's that much Bowden tube down in this thing. And the problem is, I mean, it goes down till basically it touches the nozzle. The problem is when we push our nozzle temperature to 275 or to honestly anything much above 260, our Teflon tube can release gases which will kill us if we breathe them. So that's no bueno. So to solve that problem, we go to what's called an all-metal hot end, which I have one here in front of me. And the all-metal hot end, if you look in the end of it, you'll see right there is our hole that our filament goes in. The um, Bowden tube only can go down that far, and the top end of this does not get hot enough, even though I get my nozzle to 275, 280 degrees. We have a nice big cooling block here that our fan blows on, a nice big heat sink, and um, it prevents this from getting much hotter. So, about six months ago, I was on AliExpress searching for fans for something, and I discovered these. This heat block is a copy or a look-alike or a clone of a very popular all-metal hot end. I'm sorry, this hot end, I, I meant, is a copy or clone of an all-metal hot end sold by a company who I will not name because I don't want to get cease and desist letters from them. But, um, and, and I don't know whether this is a fake, whether this is the factory across the street cloning them, or whether this is actually the part that other company starts out with before they added, before they add in their features and their instructions and their support. And my understanding is that company does supply a lot of extras and really has excellent after sales support. So if that's important to you, by all means, it's worth 50 bucks, 40 bucks, whatever the difference is. But on a, on a whim, when I was surfing around that night, and I may have had a beer or two, I bought three of these for seven bucks each. I put them on, and I immediately had problems. And the problem was leakage of molten filament out of the heat break. And if you've ever had molten filament all over everything, it's not a lot of fun to clean up. It sticks like crazy to aluminum especially down in the thread. So I cleaned it all up, put it back on, did it again. I got burned a few times, cleaned it all up, put it back on, you know, and went through this three, four times trying to record video. And I finally said, you know what, the hell with this, and um, shelved it and moved on to other projects. So recently I discovered a type of filament that I would really like to print with, and it's a nylon type filament. And um, requires 275, 280 degrees, and I am not going to be able to do that with this. So I got one of these out of the bag. I got the one I, this is a brand new one out of the bag. I, um, I got the one I had been working with. I made sure it was all cleaned up again, and I tried to figure out what I did wrong and why I was getting the leakage. No shocking, no shock to find out that I had assembled it incorrectly. So let me go over with you what I did wrong and what you have to do right to get one of these put together properly. So I'm going to disassemble it for you here real quick so we can really get a better look at what's going on. And um, bear with me here. These things have about 87 millimeters of fine, super fine thread on them. But let me spin them out real quick. 
probably should have done that before we started, but I wanted you to see it assembled. And when you get these things out of the bag, nothing is tight, everything's loose, nothing's adjusted. It's all on you to figure out how to get it on and working right. I kind of like that sort of thing, but I know not everybody does. So this is the heat block. This is where our heater cartridge goes in. It's what our nozzle screws in. This little part here is called the heat break. And our heat cartridge goes in that hole in the side that heats everything up. So what I did was I just tightened the nozzle down until it hit. I tightened this down until it hit. I put it together. And the problem is I would have a gap. Let me unthread it here for you. I would have a gap grow between these parts when this got hot and expanded. And with this threaded down until it bottomed, I couldn't tighten it to close that gap. So it turns out the correct way to put these together is, and if I'm not doing this right on camera, you know, bear with me, the correct way to do it is thread the nozzle down until it bottoms. Back it out, and I've read quarter turn, but I have looked at some of these nozzles and threaded portions between manufacturers are nowhere close to being identical. So I figured, well, you know, if a quarter is good, a half must be better, and three quarters would be even better yet. So that's what I did. Then, with that backed out so that you have a gap so it can be tightened a little bit, thread this back, this heat, heat break back in. Whoops. It's hard to do things reaching around the camera. Thread it back in and tighten it down until it bottoms against to where these two machine surfaces on the bottom of the heat break and the bottom of the nozzle are mated. I kind of snug the nozzle up with my wrench. I don't have it sitting here in front of me. Then put it back together and the heat break slides into the heat block. There's a little set screw on either side and then um, put it back together. Now when you tighten this thing up, and this is a mistake that I made that I had to fix, if you want to learn about how to fix mistakes or how not to make them, come watch my videos because I make every one there is, there is, which is one of the reasons why I might be good at solving problems because I've already made all the mistakes. A guy I used to, who taught me how to do some things, he used to say, you never make the same stupid mistake twice because there's no reason to because the world's filled full of new stupid mistakes to move on to. If you over tighten these, these screws here on either side, you'll notice that they're not in line with where the surface is bottomed together. So you will wind up tweaking the heat block in this direction. So give it a little bit more than snug, put the heater cartridge back in, put it all back on your printer, heat it up to 250 degrees, then tighten the nozzle again because this block will have expanded and those two machine surfaces will have pulled apart. Tighten this down. And if you're going to go to 300 or 280, maybe it's best to do it at that temperature too. I did 300, or excuse me, I did 250. I think it'll be fine. But anyway, when you tighten this together at temperature, you have now rammed those two mating surfaces together, and they are now not going to separate on you when it gets hot, and you won't have the leakage. I also read that you should put Teflon tape on the threads. Now, that might seem counterintuitive to you, and it certainly did to me, but because I love making mistakes and fixing them later, I went ahead and did it. So I put it all back together, and my leaking issue was solved, which I was absolutely ecstatic about. But the problem is, I hit about layer 8, 9, 10, and it started, the extruder started popping and skipping, and we all know what that's going to mean that's going to mean that we are going to get crappy layers. And you can see right about here where it stopped working right and where my layers got crappy. So I actually, since since once wasn't good enough, I tried it again and it started popping again and um, I stopped. So that's when I got back on Google and I tried to gain a little bit more knowledge. And I found out that the heat sink, or excuse me, the um, Teflon tape is... A really bad idea because what we are trying to do is we are trying to promote the heat transfer between the block and the nozzle, the block and the heat break, and the heat break and the cooling area. So the suggestion is to use heat sink paste. So I cleaned all the Teflon tape back off, and, and apparently, the company that um, the name brand company that sells these, whether it's a clone or whatever, they provide a small packet of heat sink paste with it. So I took it all back apart. 
I put heat sink paste on the nozzle threads. I put heat sink paste on the heat break threads. And I put heat sink paste where the the um, heat break pushes up into the into the um, cooler in order to um, promote the cooling there as well. So after all that was done, oh, and I also put heat sink paste on the cartridge to promote the um, transfer of heat from the cartridge into the heater block. So put it all back together again, did my little trick heating it up, tightening the nozzle, and I had solved the the, um, it still didn't leak, which again made me really happy because I was afraid without the Teflon tape it would leak. But it's really properly mating those two surfaces, those two machine surfaces that stops the leakage. So I was happy that it didn't leak. And while I wasn't getting as much of the popping and skipping, it was still happening. So I didn't take it back apart. <laughs> I got back on Google and um, I learned something new. And that is that with these type of fill, these type of hot ends that use the Bowden tube all the way down to there, we can retract molten filament from the nozzle into the Bowden tube, and that won't be a problem because of how slick that, how slick the inside of that Bowden tube is. But that inside of this all metal hot end is not as anywhere near as slick as Teflon. So when we retract when we retract the molten filament out of the nozzle and into that metal hole, it's going to bind when it tries to reprime. So the answer is our three millimeter or five millimeter retraction distance has to go down to one millimeter so that we're barely pulling enough out of the nozzle to keep it from blobbing. And then while our retraction speed at 40 to 60 is fine, the reprime speed needs to go down to 20 because we don't have as much of a frictionless surface. And as we push down in, we don't want to mushroom that molten filament and once again have it bind. So move it back in a little slower. So again, one millimeter retraction, 40 to 60 on retract speed is fine, but reprime speed needs to be down about 20. When I did all that, all my problems went away. And here's the part that I was trying to print. This is the mount for the bullseye cooler for the Ender 3, designed by the same guy who um, made the Pets Fang. And you can see it prints like that from the bottom up. You can see my layers over here are very, very nice. Uh, apparently, some other settings are still need, the settings in your slicer are still going to need to be tweaked, because while this part did print really well, I got a little bit more stringing and blobbing that I would like, so I'm going to tweak those retraction settings a little bit more. But I got a really nice sturdy part. The layers are solid. It really is nice. So there you have it. All metal hot end for your Ender 3. Seven bucks. Again, to go over it again, this part is a clone or the base part that the other company starts with. You get no after purchase support. You get no instructions. You get nothing. If you're a guy like me and you like to solve problems and you want to save 40, 50 bucks, this might be an answer for you. If you are somebody who wants that, that extra little bit that the other company provides, if you need that level of extra support after purchase support, you know, 50 bucks ain't that much money to save yourself all the headaches that I went through. I would highly recommend if you're one of those people, you buy it from them. And that's just as simple as it gets. So that's it for me. In the near future, I am going to be tweaking my firmware, and I'm going to make a video of that, tweaking my firmware to remove the 260-degree limit for the Ender 3. How well the rest of the Ender 3 parts will put up with that, I don't know. We may be upgrading power supplies and other things in the near future as well. The connectors on the Ender 3, you may have seen other videos that, that Creality is using fake connectors and that they don't take heat as well as the real ones, whether or not that's going to cause me a problem at 275, 280 degrees, I do not know, but I will monitor it closely and we will see what we see. So if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. There are affiliate links below, some new ones I just got from GearBest. They don't cost you any extra. They help me out a lot. Thanks to everybody who has used them. And I will look forward to seeing you next time with more information about printing in nylon on the Ender 3. Thanks, and stop by again. Bye for now.